This is Hiroza Shaib with another episode of Satoshi Treasure Hunters. And huzzah! Another clue has dropped. So there, it's a twofer. And we'll get into it, but uh, I'm liking the fact that more clues are coming out, more keys are being dropped, but <laughs> we'll talk about some of the game mechanic issues that are happening with this game uh, in the Nirvana weekly update. Uh, but for now, we're just going to disclose what the, the clue is and the amount of keys that you can potentially uh, earn if you solve these clues. So let's get into it. Okay, so look, well, let's, let's look at the key statuses that we have so far. So the Earth key, the Umbun key are unfound. The Business Card key and the First Art Tour key uh, are unfound. Uh, the Rune key, which I spoke about how it potentially uh, could be sabotage, that's not the case, and we'll talk about that during uh, the Nirvana Weekly Update, uh, the weekly update for the hunt. Uh, the cult key, we won't know who the winner is until June 30th. The Nirvana key, we will not know who the winner is until June 27th, 1 p.m. at the meeting house for the is IRT house. Uh, well, the key will be released. The zero knowledge key, we will talk about that during the game mechanics, but it is currently unknown. And we have two new keys that have dropped. So two new clues, the philantric keys and the dissident key. So we'll talk about the philantric key first. It's a charitable contribution. So oops. <clears throat> and let's enhance this. A charitable contribution. Dedicated to achieving global sustainable development, agents have partnered with Binance Charity Foundation to improve the transparency of philanthropic donations and to expand the use case for cryptocurrencies. I just want to point out that Dogecoin has done this. <laughs> but And there's been other Bitcoin projects that are in this space that also do this. But... <clears throat> We also want to reward hunters who are willing to donate and help others. For this uh, Sunday, uh, June 30th at 11.59 p.m. GMT, Eastern Time, New York Time, whichever team donates the most during the following week will be able to claim one key. Four keys in total will be given. So key one is from June 30th through July 7th. July 7th through July 14th will be key two. Key three is July 14th through July 21st. And key four is July 21st through July 28th. All these are Eastern Standard Time. All of these have to be done by 11.59 p.m. So <clears throat> there's a potential for you to purchase basically one, two, three, four keys throughout the week if you are the clan or individual hunter that is successful in your donations. Let's go out on how to donate. You can select a specific project that you're interested in donating or to the general Binance charity wallet at, uh, and we'll go to where the, parent, the project list in BNB, which is the Binance token that they have, BTC, which is Bitcoin, and ETH, which is Ethereum. To indicate the team which you're affiliated, please do not donate anonymously. Instead, choose Donate Openly so your contributions can be tracked. You can choose to donate as an individual or on behalf of your team and use Satoshi's Treasure slash team name required. So it would be like Satoshi's Treasure, um, Satoshi's Treasure Hunters. Uh, individual name optional. Uh, so I guess you can go Treasure Hunter, Treasure Hunter here as your full name. If you don't have a team or choose to donate as an individual, you can choose a name, Satoshi Treasure required, your name. Please note that the only Donors whose names are with the prefix Satoshi's Treasure will be tracked as participating in this game. So that's very important that you have to put Satoshi's Treasure. Uh, lastly, after you make the transfer to the charity wallet, you need to submit your text ID and your email address. The email address is required for us to send the key if your team or the individual uh, is the winner. 
To find more hunters to team up with, join our Telegram group. So now they're saying that the Sochi Treasures is the official Telegram group. It, for a while, there was unofficial, so now it's official. All Satoshi Treasure-related donation information will be published on Twitter weekly. Winners will be announced each Monday on both Twitter and email, and keys will be distributed to all hunters in the winning team via email. So, if you contribute, say, one BTC or one dollar, you know, or a single Satoshi, and you put yourself as uh, Satoshi Treasure Hunters and slash Hiroja Shide. And I am, my team is the winner. So, I mean, everyone in my team would win. Or if I'm participating with another, you know, clan, uh, I put Satoshi, or not Satoshi, Satoshi Treasure Hunters, that clan name, Hiroja Shibe, and we win, then everyone in that clan that participated will receive the key. So, <clears throat> here is an example of how you're supposed to uh, send the email. Sorry about that. Uh, so leave your name, donor name, Satoshi Treasure, your team, or if you're doing it as an individual, you just drop the team name, and Jason, or whatever made up name you have. The date, you know, that's automatic donation. So 0 0.33 BTC to whatever address you are doing, and then you put the text, the text ID. And then email, uh, require key will be emailed to winners. So this is the kind of the format that they want you to utilize when donation and emailing. So if you don't know what a text ID is, <clears throat> every time you do a Bitcoin transaction, you kind of, in essence, receive a receipt or indicator of your specific transaction you send, whether you're sending it to yourself through a wallet, you're moving it through wallets, uh, payment for something, going on to exchange, there's a transaction ID. And it basically is identifying the number for a transaction. So you can keep track of your funds or the funds that you're submitting to yourself or to anybody else. So examples they give, the first ever Bitcoin transaction to Hal Finney in 2010 is right here. Um, and then the Bitcoin transaction for 10,000 BTC in 2010. And the transaction containing the first donation I received for making this website. Um, this website is called Learning Me a Bitcoin. And you, could, you will have this transaction ID uh, automatically done in most wallets. Uh, the text ID is always 32 bytes or 64 characters. So you, to know you have it correct, you have to have 64 credit characters and it's hexadecimal. Uh, you get a text ID by hashing the transaction data through SHA-256 twice. This is for security purposes. And when it pops out it has this particular order right here with the one first but to order to tra track the transaction through a blockchain um, through the blockchain um, if you use a block you have is you have to reverse the byte order which is typically automatically done um, by most wallets so when you see it you already see it reversed you don't see the original text ID unless you go to the Johns or go through a block explorer and go through the process yourself. So if you just have some transaction data and you want to search for the text ID in the blockchain, you have to search it in reverse byte order. So the original output will be this, and then the reverse order is this right here. And that's typically what you will see again, like in the wallets, it's the reverse order to make it um, easier for users so they're not confused and going, oh, I have to reverse this? Blah. Uh, due to the historical accident, the text uh, and block hashes the Bitcoin core uses are byte reverse. I'm um, not too surely why. Maybe something like using um, OpenSSL, a big number to store hashes or something like that, then printed them as a number. And um, that's one of the Bitcoin core developers, um, Wal um, Walden Van Dierlin. In other words, there's a slight oversight in the redevelopment of Bitcoin that has now become a standard, which is the case for a lot of things in life. <laughs> And then it goes, goes on. So what are text IDs used? Searching the blockchain. If you just made a transaction, you can use a text ID to find it in the, in the blockchain. For example, this is from the Bitcoin client, client. Get a raw transaction. This is the bash. Undo that. So if you, you're given the text ID by your Bitcoin wallet, it's already searchable, meaning it's already reversed. And so when you submit your donation and you're doing it through your wallet, 
uh, just check for the text ID and add it here in the format, say text ID, you know, make sure you have your name and all that stuff and, and make sure you email, email it to them so that way they know uh, you've contributed and who you are so that way you can get the key. So, <clears throat> you may have heard of Binance is one of the major exchanges, is one of the largest exchanges out there. <clears throat> so as you can see on the site that they've created for the Binance charity, which they published and opened um, wide towards the community, uh, you can see they've had 408.37 uh, BTC uh, raised. They had 981 donors um, and finished the end beneficiaries or 20,000, 2,000 or 20,191 people, I guess. So you have the Binance Charity Water, uh, empowering uh, Buddha, save landslide disaster victims in Uganda, um, El Centrum campaign, the Malta Community Chess Foundation seeks crypto donations to support and work that provided financial material. So all, these are all the different um, charitable contributions and donations that they're seeking. I, I can't believe Rebuild Notre Dame's on here. But okay. So <clears throat> these are the things that they are supporting, backing, and encouraging people within the cryptocurrency community to participate in. And, and this is part of the key, if you will or keys, four keys, if your team or individual is the winner, you can, in essence, um, purchase these four keys. And it goes to a, a good cause. Uh, again, you might have heard of Binance, beyond just being an exchange, uh, they transferred $1.2 billion for under two cents. Uh, this is the article from Cointelegraph. So on June 26, about 1.2 billion in Binance coin has been transferred in 1.1 seconds with a 0.015 fee on the Binance chain reveals data published on Will Alert. The exact amount of Binance coin's move was 32 million. As Twitter pointed out, 8 is a number like no other in Chinese neurology. The number eight is viewed as such an auspicious number that even assigning a number with several eights is considered very lucky. So Binance also recently moved 9,000 Bitcoins to back its BTC back token on the Binance chain. So these are things that they have done. This is kind of big news, if you will, in some sense. Uh, I've, I've never been a big fan of the whole moving large amounts of money for pennies on the dollar because I think it, it personally for me, it loses sight to the fact that the whole purpose of the economic system that's being developed around Bitcoin is for everybody. So it's, you also have to think of the, the smallest individual, the common person. And even 15 cents is a lot. Or is it 15? Well, or, okay, so... 0 0.015 so even half a penny so it's it's still considered you know a, quite a bit if you will even a dollar is considered a lot in some places in the world or even certain people at certain economic levels it's just it just is that's just the nature of our existence if you will so <clears throat> i have a link in the show notes to more information about binance like the history of binance and its existence it's considered one of the more reputable exchanges out there, but even with being reputable, just the fact that they're being an exchange, and even though they have shifted their format to a more decentralized nature instead of being a centralized service, it, it still has its qualms and issues, particularly if you're just a Bitcoin maxillist. The fact that they list altcoins is an issue for people. Their type of pairings, the fact that they created their own token, um, the fact that they're not, I don't know, with sword in hand or whatever and fighting regulators uh, because they're KYC and AML compliant. And they're pretty soon, I believe they're open, going to be opening up a, a U.S. branch, if you will. So there's those type of dilemmas. <clears throat> but that is the philanthropy 
uh, key. Uh, the fellow on top of key. Um, we'll talk about the qualms and issues with this particular key when we talk about the do the weekly update about the Nirvana key and just overall some of the game mechanic issues with um, this particular game overall. Now on to the distances key. So the distances keys. Uh, when I first saw the name, just looking at the name of the key, I thought of... Uh, so the distances key. Uh, when I first saw the name, I thought of cognitive distances. I thought, oh, maybe this might do with uh, the brain. As you know, mental discomfort experienced by a person who holds two or more contradic contradictory beliefs, ideas, or values. This discomfort is triggered by a situation where a person's belief clashes with new evidence perceived by the person. When confronted with facts and contradictory beliefs, ideas, and values, people will try to find a way to resolve the contradiction to reduce their discomfort. Uh, so initially I thought, oh, you know, brain. And then I look at the clue and it says the difference between listening and hearing. And I thought, um, that sounds more like the concept of uh, music. Uh, constants and uh, dissonance in music uh, in music, uh, constants and distance are categorized of simultaneously or successive sounds. And so constants are associated with sweetness, pleasant, and accessible. Dissonance is associated with harsh, unpleasant, or unacceptability. So in music, um, the, the chords or certain chords, um, they don't really fundamentally like when they're together they they kind of in in essence they they cause the brain to go ah. but when paired with a positive sound or a, a consonant sound you have a consonant sound the dissonance or you go distances and you end with a consonant it, it causes uh songs to be better you to have a better flavor to them not to be boring because when it's just constantly like positive and pleasant sounding it sounds like elevator music. You you join in the back of your brain and you just kind of turn off. You don't really listening, listen. But when you have these um, jarring sounds in music, when it goes from a, a minor key, if you will, to a flat and then to something like uh, a whole or a positive key or C sharp or something like that, then all of a sudden you start moving with the music you start listening you start paying attention so <clears throat> in this article it has um the unpleasant sounds consonant chords are roughly speaking made up of notes that sound good together like the middle c and g above and dissonant chords are combinations of sound jarring like a middle c and a sharp c so you get like a the c and then da, that doesn't sound right when you get a c and then da, it, it kind of grows together when it comes to, to music. Um, the best um, modern version of this, if you will, is Adele, Someone Like You. As far as modern music goes, when it comes to dissonance um, music or use of dissonance in music, um, I can't play the, the, the sound and I'm not going to play the video because I'll probably get copyright struck, if you will. But if you listen to that song, Adele, it has kind of that jarringness to the music, a bounce, if you will, positive, and what can be perceived as negative notes in them to draw you into the music. So this is a stock photo that has this uh, image inserted inside. You have the Satoshi Treasure little sticker on the, on the laptop, and the laptop has this information so there's a calendar event for june 29th 2019 and it kind of gives you some hints like hong, hong kong um sorry hotel search the oval central vip access again binance and we'll we'll talk about that when we talk about the weekly update uh, it has a youtube video uh this is actually thor's hammer 
Um, he's a YouTuber that talks about uh, Satoshi's treasure hunt. I have a link uh, in the description of all the, the main ones that have been talking about this um, game in the show notes. So you can always click and link to his um, like, comment, subscribe to his channel. Uh, Taipei, there's supposed to be a mini hunt that begins in Taipei. And in fact, it coincides with a event that is taking place by Binance July 2nd. And again, we'll, I will talk about that during the game mechanics of the Nirvana weekly update episode. Then you have a chart here, BNB, Binance Coin. So trade, you have Zoom, find a time. So there's, there's some information here. I thought perhaps maybe if you, if you look at it, it's very jarring that the, the, um, all the different tabs are open up here. Uh, even like the Bitcoin, the price, you have the key base. I'm not sure where that icon is for what type of app. Telegram, Ghost. I forgot what that's a symbol for. Um, so we have a lot of symbols here going on. Even in the you know, Slack, LinkedIn, even in, in the different browsers, if you will. And there's still, I thought, maybe superpose. This still has to do with music. Maybe you have to superimpose a sheet music and see or bin walk this image and see if it has anything to do with music. I don't know. This, this is just my thoughts about uh, the initial clue drop or what I thought this might be. But, you know, just gather your fellow hunters, if you will. Or your fellow clansmen, however you wish to label yourselves. Or your view as an individual, got to just sit down there and suss it out. But this is the clue for the uh, dissonance key, which is just a single key. And just briefly before we wrap this up, I also thought about, uh, you know, intervals and chords when it comes to music. You know, constant intervals are as figured here. Minor third, major third, perfect fourth, fifth, minor, sixth. And then you have the minor second, major second, a tritone, minor seventh, major seventh. So minor and majors are the same note right next to one another. Can It can cause a, a jarringness, if you will, in music. But when you mix it up, when you go to a minor to a major third, and then down to maybe go to major second, and then back to a minor and sharps and just kind of go up and forth back and forth up and forth then things kind of change when it comes to the music like simple intervals are considered a constant are the minor third major third perfect fourth perfect fifth minor six major six an octave which is right here um but, but because you, you kind of go up and down and give that jarring sense to the mind if you will when you're listening it causes you to, in essence, uh, listen and hear, if you will, like really hear what's going on. Uh, you have two keys, the philanthropy key, the dissonance key. With the philanthropy key, you have the potential of receiving four keys. Uh, with the with the dissonance key, you have, you know, just one key, so five keys in total. Uh, you still have the Nirvana key uh, that's going to wrap up uh, sometime today or later on in the evening on June 27th. And then the Colt key. And then there's a mini mini uh, hunt occurring in Taipei. Uh, I'll go into some of the details about the keys and the game mechanics on my weekly update. But for now, we have, again, we have... So the Philanthropist key and the Dissonance key is out. Um... And we'll see what how things shake out. Uh, I think pretty much by the end of June, we'll we'll see where different clans stand as far as uh, the key releases. So <clears throat> even more so by the end of July, if you think about the the planters key. So this is Rosha Scheib. This is Toshi's Treasure Hunters. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe and share and comment below. And on with the hunt.